Generally speaking, Indian men have an SMV lower than other races, mostly due to their poor bone structure, dimorphism, and height. If we see the statistics it's quite understandable that the average Indian men are unattractive. Now the reason is very simple, we consider certain facial features attractive and certain features unattractive, and the average Indian men possess features that are considered unattractive. But this doesn't mean that Indians are not attractive, there are Indian guys we know who are considered conventionally attractive. If we see the data Indian guys get less approached by females than other races, let's us just not think about the face. The average height of an Indian guy is just 5 feet 5 inches and we know that height plays an important role in determining attractiveness, it's a dimorphic trait especially in men. As we can see in this graph that almost 90% of women will reject you if you are 165 centimeters tall. This is one of the reasons why Indians are considered unattractive, we should not forget that short height comes with a short and narrow frame which is also a red flag, a bigger frame is considered sexually dimorphic and hence considered attractive by females. Not to forget that your face is much more important than your height, and we explained this in our previous video. An average Indian guy is facially unattractive, a paper suggests that South Indians have a much shorter midface than North Indians, which suggests that they have short face syndrome, which is considered unattractive. In conclusion, average Indian men have low SMV pretty much like average white and Asian guys. Every race has unattractive and attractive people, and as we mentioned before there are attractive Indian guys. Today we are going to have a look at Ritik Roshan, who is considered conventionally attractive. Critic Roshan is an Indian Bollywood actor, and probably one of the most popular actors in the industry often cited as one of the most attractive male celebrities in the country. Before starting we would like to let you know that this video is not meant to disrespect any race or any person in general. Instead, this video is meant to be informative and educational about what makes a person attractive, and how we perceive others solely based on their looks. When you look at Critic Roshan you can't really identify him as an Indian, that's because he doesn't fully represent Indian features. Looking at his face he seems to hold mixed ethnicities, although both of his parents are Indian. He does remind me of Carmen Solomons who also looks like a mixed race individual but her parents are from Africa and she claims she is 100% African. You may have connections with other ethnicities but if you don't represent features from a certain race, you can't be classified as that race or at least people will not identify you as a certain race. For example, Nick Kaufman's mother is Indian but he simply doesn't represent Indian features. That's the reason he gets blended in with other white guys and people don't identify him as an Indian, we would say he does have some Indian features but mostly gets overlooked by European features. And a similar case happens with Critic Roshan, but unlike Nick who doesn't represent Indian features at all, Critic Roshan does represent some Indian features, and that's the reason he is an established Bollywood actor. Is he Indian? He does not look Indian. But he, he doesn't look Indian. No, he doesn't look like Indian. Mm -mm. No. Does he look Indian? No. Maybe, I don't know. No, I don't. Not really? I don't know. <laughs> a little in the face, but not really. It's very unlikely that Bollywood would cast a foreign actor in their lead roles and it's very similar to Hollywood. They don't cast a non-white actor in the lead roles. That's pretty acceptable because having a bunch of foreign actors wouldn't look natural. But Hollywood doesn't even cast non-white actors in non-white roles. The practice of casting white actors in non-white roles is still prevalent in Hollywood, despite widespread condemnation and protest. It's primarily done due to businesses, as an actor's appearance is one of the most important factor when determining a good film. A certain look is selected by the casting director to portray a certain character. They don't cast non-white actors in non-white roles, especially in mythological films. This is because certain features such as blue eyes and a strong bone structure can't be found in non-white actors. Especially in superhero characters where the characters need these western features to look more appealing and intimidating to the audience. Just look at Prince of Persia movie. They still put a JBW actor for a movie that takes place in Old Middle East. Over 95% of Persia has black or brown eyes. When they asked the director of the movie why they chose a white western actor, he said something like, people wouldn't want to watch the movie if we put a brown Middle Eastern actor. He was like, come on man, if we put an ethnic guy with a, a brown eyes in lead hero character, nobody would take that seriously. Similarly, let me give you another example, brutal example. Sometimes they even change actors' eye colors for a movie if the actor isn't white enough. If you watch the Justice League, this is how Jason Momoa looked like in that movie. Baby blue eyes. But in real life, he doesn't have blue eyes. 
they straight up told him, come on man, this is a superhero movie. You can't, you can't have brown eyes. And Hollywood does this all the time, according to them we will not watch a movie if they put a non-white actor in such films. In the superhero film, actor D.B. Sweeney plays Terry Fitzgerald, who is African American in the comics. Spawn creator and executive producer on the film Todd McFarlane said, the decision was somewhat based on the cold reality that if people perceive this as a black movie there would be no way we would receive the 45 million we were after. Terry's skin color has not been a major issue but what Terry stands for is more important, every decision that I was directly involved in was based upon what would appeal to the greatest number of people while at the same time not offending the core audience. Back to critic Roshan, as we mentioned before he does have some Indian features, so he doesn't completely look like a foreigner which benefited him in getting regular offers in the industry. If he looked like a complete foreigner like Karen Kapoor, he would never be a popular actor. For someone like Karen Kapoor who is a former actor in Bollywood, he never got roles because he was too foreign for the industry. Although he is Indian, his father is Indian and his mother is British, that's the reason he completely looks like a white guy. And hers the catch is you may have the citizenship of India but if you don't have Indian genes, you will not be classified as an Indian. Indians praise critic Roshan because he does represent Indian features and they think critic represents someone of their own. Not to forget that Karen is a lot more good looking than critic, has a better eye area, and has ideal forward facial development, with no recession in any part of the face indicating a perfect craniofacial development, and is definitely a model tier. On the other hand, critic does have recessed features but it does get overlooked by his dimorphic features, which we will explain in a minute. In conclusion, Critic represents both Indian and foreign features and that is what makes him unique and different than the rest. But declaring him a guy who possesses just Indian features would be incorrect. We hope that you understood that different races have different features and that's how we differentiate one race from another. One of the most common misconceptions that people think is that white skin is the only factor that differentiates between Caucasians and Asians. Well, white skin is a trait for people having European ancestry. But the skull shape or the underlying bone structure is the most overlooked factor when differentiating one race from another. Studies are proving that different races have different skull shapes. And we quote from a paper, using the skull-based categorization, anthropologists identified three or four racial groups, Caucasoid characterized by a tall dolichocephalic skull, receded zygomas, large brow ridge and projecting narrow nasal apertures. Negroid characterized by a short dolichocephalic skull, receded zygomas and wide nasal apertures. Mongoloid characterized by a medium brachycephalic skull, projecting zygomas, small brow ridge, and small nasal apertures. And you can see the difference when we compare a black guy with a white guy. The back guy has alveolar prognathism and a broad nasal aperture. On the other hand, the white guy has relatively no prognathism, or the extension of the lower jaw, and relatively little projection of the alveolar ridge, or the bones which contain teeth. This does prove that based on a bone structure we differentiate one race from another. An average person tearing each face. Mixed race individuals usually possess genes from both races. For example, American model Jeremy Meeks holds mixed ethnicity of French, Scottish, and African American. Looking at Jeremy Meeks' face he doesn't have alveolar prognathism, which is a Caucasoid feature, he does have wide nasal apertures and a less dominant chin, which is a feature of a Negroid not to forget his bright blue eyes which we all know is a European feature. Hence, different races have different skull shapes and it's quite well documented by studies. Jeremy Meeks is neither white nor black, people who possess genes from different races usually have some connections with other races. But that's not the case with Critic Roshan, his parents and grandparents are Indian, we checked their family background and it's a surprise that his father, grandfather, and uncle suffers from male pattern baldness but he is still rocking the Norwood one hair in his 40s. Another thing that we noticed is that his uncle has brown eyes and a shorter midface unlike him and his father, again quite surprisingly Critic Roshan's grandparents didn't have green eyes, but still, his father got them and they got transferred to him. Pretty much like Jeremy Meeks, his parents also didn't have blue eyes but he and his brother manages to get it. Dimorphism is one of the most important factors that determine sexual attractiveness in both men and women. The more dimorphic you are the more sexually attractive you are to your opposite sex. Bigger, wider males are considered more attractive by females. Keep in mind this doesn't mean huge muscles, bigger in terms of height and frame. Critic does have a good height and frame but not the perfect and not the best we have seen. Singh investigated the role of WHR in the male body attractiveness as viewed by females. The results showed that waist to hip ratio of 0.9 was ranked as the most attractive. 
Critic has a WHR of 0.8 which is pretty ideal, but the overall shoulder width is not the best we have seen. Don't get confused, we are not saying his frame is bad, it's definitely considered attractive by females. His overall frame is wider than females which makes him dimorphic. He is 6 feet tall which means he is a tall and wide guy, and bigger than females makes you more attractive. You just can't be smaller and less dimorphic than females, even the pretty boys who are considered feminine do have masculine features otherwise, they wouldn't be considered attractive by females. Critics shoulder to waist ratio is also ideal which is around 1.6. Women focus primarily on the waist to chest ratio or more specifically waist to shoulder. This is analogous to the waist to hip ratio, WHR, that men prefer. Key body image for a man in the eyes of a woman would include big shoulders, chest, upper back and a slim waist area. The leg to body ratio is seen as an indicator of physical attractiveness, on this metric, the most attractive ratio of leg to the body for men is 1 to 1, and critic does have the ideal leg to body ratio. Keep in mind if you are fat or too skinny having an ideal waist to hip ratio and shoulder to waist ratio won't be of any use. That's because the distribution of fat and muscle mass is also important and critic is a pretty lean guy. Also, Keep in mind if you are lean but you don't have ideal body proportions you won't be considered attractive by females, both go hand in hand. In conclusion, Critic has a near ideal body and that's what helped him in getting roles that require physical work, where the character needs to be dominant and strong. Being tall and wide is what makes him dimorphic, similarly having a bigger skull than females also makes him dimorphic. Men who are considered masculine do have a bigger skulls than females. Certain things make a face attractive such as proper craniofacial development including ideal facial growth, inner pupillary distance, etc. which is necessary for both genders. And there are specific factors that make a face dimorphic such as men can get away with a longer midface. Men generally have a longer midface than women but having a tall midface and narrow facial width is somewhat ideal according to papers. According to the paper shorter, wider faces are considered more ideal, but critic doesn't have a short and wide face. But here's the catch, critic's facial height comes from subnasal to mentone, not from his midface. In other words, his tall midface is compensated by his lower third. To make a tall face look attractive such as supermodel John Cortirina, the facial height should come from subnasal to mentone to make the face more ideal. As having a long midface is unattractive. He doesn't have a wide face which is not ideal for men according to research. But again it's not too narrow that will negatively affect his looks. Theoretically. The jaw width should be around 80 to 85% of your bizygomatic width to be ideal. And critic bigonial width is around 80 to 85% of bizygomatic width. Looking at his side profile, he has a downward growth of his jaws that gives his tall chin. This is also an ideal as a lower gonial angle is more ideal in men. His downward growth benefits his lower third from the frontal view, as it gives an appearance of a tall lower third to balance out his proportions. Due to having a downward facial growth, he has recessed cheekbones and under eye area. Although his recessed cheekbones are not visible from the front under certain lighting it's quite visible from certain angles. His recessed infraorbital can be seen clearly from the front as he aged. At the age of 48 when most men get overweight and lose their hair, it's quite remarkable that he is still in shape and not to forget his Norwood one hair. The downward growth of his jaws resulted in him having a more flat face which is visible from certain angles, it also gives him a long mandibular length, which makes him look masculine. People believe that hollow cheeks are a result of low body fat percentage but in reality, it's due to the large distance between gonion and zygoma and a wide begonial length and he doesn't have that, the distance between his gonion and zygoma is short. Critics low cheeks are not a big deal breaker, most masculine looking, attractive men have flat cheekbones, it's just an add-on probably for modeling. Looking at Critic Roshan he does have some facial asymmetry but it's not quite noticeable unless you put effort into finding asymmetry. Most good-looking men have asymmetry and it's not a big factor, I term this asymmetry as small asymmetries as this can't be discovered at a glance. He also has a boyish look and that's because of his slightly feminine eye area. Deep-set eyes with low orbital size are considered masculine and round eyes with upper eyelid exposure are considered feminine. Basically, in simple words, his eyes aren't that wider than they are tall, he also has upper eyelid exposure and eyelid asymmetries which is quite not visible by an average individual. He doesn't have any scleral show and that's why his eyes don't look tired even with eyelid exposure. If you ask me, I would say your eyes are the most important feature of your face. In this morph, we made this eye height bigger and as you can see his eyes became more feminine. Since hooded eyes are masculine, 
you can see him squinting in every picture to reduce his upper eyelid and to make his eyes appear more masculine. He lacks both upper and lower eye areas and that's why there's so much hollowness in his eye area, especially his under eyes area. Making his eyes more masculine by decreasing his eye height and increasing his eye width doesn't boost his attractiveness to a great degree. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? His inner pupillary distance and his eyebrow positioning are pretty fine, thicker eyebrows would look better on him due to his light eyes and skin tone. He has a neutral canthal tilt but in some pictures, his right eye looks like it has a positive canthal tilt. His less masculine eyes give him an innocent boyish look, and combined with his other masculine features does look very unique. When he was young, he didn't look masculine at all, he looked more on the pretty boy side with a big skull and frame. He eventually became more masculine as he grew older. And this is what exactly a male should age, being a pretty boy during high school to appear appealing to most teenage girls and age is more masculine. And last but not the least feature of his eyes is his eye color, in India whereas most people are assured and have brown eyes, having green eyes and ideal height is what makes him different from the rest of the population. Another thing that we noticed is that he has a much lighter skin tone than the rest of the population, and it is not only him other lead Bollywood actors also have a much lighter. India does have a self-hatred toward their skin color, where light skin is considered superior and more good looking. They even market their fairness creams with the top actors which in reality doesn't make your skin lighter. Other features that make him masculine such as his neck being almost as big as his jaw, his brow ridge isn't masculine but it's not feminine either, and he has a nasal frontal angle of 133. And last but not the least, he has a narrow long nose with a masculine nasal tip angle and nasolabial angle. A study shows that penis length is correlated with the size of your nose. That means his penile length is also big. Critic doesn't have a robust bone structure like a male model, but he certainly doesn't have a bone structure like an average male. His features aren't perfect, while neither are the most good-looking models have perfect features. The attractive guys on the streets you see don't have perfect features, looking at different models with a unique and polarizing look makes us think like that, we should look like this. High fashion models are selected become of their certain features that don't have to be attractive. Although he lacks some angularity and has some ratios which are not ideal according to the papers, mostly got overlooked by his other features. A woman will find him very attractive and that's what matters. In a survey, they used a picture of his jaw to examine an ideal jaw and he got pretty much good results further indicating he is conventionally attractive. I would say he is a male who can be termed as classically handsome, the combination of masculinity with a touch of feminine features. Someone like Captain America, Thor and Ted Bundy who also doesn't have polarizing, unique features. All are masculine handsome men. His bone structure kinda reminds me of Neo and Ryan, he is just more attractive. The only thing we would say is that he does fully look like an Indian man. Someone who represents Indian features and is good looking will be Rohit Kondalwal. We of course can't analyze every detail in a 15 minute video because facial aesthetics is complicated. This is just a brief idea for the viewers. If you want to get your rating, analysis, or glow up advice, don't forget to check out the services the link will be in the description.